Satan, Beelzebub, the devil, the enemy, the accuser, the dragon, the serpent, all of those are his name, but Lucifer is not. One of the names that's most commonly ascribed to the devil, Satan, would be the name Lucifer. The problem is this name Lucifer, which we would even consider to be his proper name, such as John or Bob or Mary or Sue, is actually not his proper name at all. We're going to look at how we got to this name in the first place, but before we do, we need to go look at the text where we get this from. This name Lucifer is only found in one text, and it's only found in translations like the King James Version and the New King James Version. So what I want to do is I want to go to the text, which is Isaiah chapter 14, and then look at the text, and I want to also compare it with the NESB and the King James Version. But for some, before we go there, for context, we need to understand what's happening here. In Isaiah, this is speaking of this king of Babylon who is obviously prophesied about God bringing him down. He has come against not only the children of Israel, but also other nations. Israel, remember, was taken into captivity by Babylon, but God has prophesied their destruction as he removes them out. And so this is what the prophet is speaking of. And so after his destruction, as we read in Isaiah, particularly 14, we'll see this being spoken of. And so notice what he says in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. Let's look at the NASB first. How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn. But then if we compare it to the King James Version, which is right beside it, how art thou fallen from heaven? And here it is, O Lucifer, son of the morning. So the question is going to be which verse, which version is proper. Remember, this is only found in this portion of the Bible. Nowhere else do we see this word Lucifer being used. So the question is, if that's his name, one, why isn't it used elsewhere? Well, the reason why is because that's not his name. And we're going to look at how we got to this name Lucifer in just a second. But what I want to do is go now and compare this with the Hebrew text to see what is actually said in the original language. In the Hebrew text, we have these three words where we get the, the term star of the morning, Hillel ben Shakar. Hillel means the shining one, the bright one, and then ben sun, and then Shakar means of the dawn or the morning, the term O star of the morning. And so it's proper to call this person or this reference of this king, O star of the morning. Well, one, before we get to how it gets to be Lucifer, why is the king of Babylon being called the bright and morning star or the star of the morning? Well, in that time, in that day, you could see the star, the star falling down from heaven virtually every morning. It's not actually a star, although the Hebrew word for star also references not only just a star, the, the fireball that we see in the sky, but also references planets, also references comets. And so you would see Venus in the morning kind of look like it's descending in the morning as the morning proceeds. And so every morning you would see Venus fall from the sky, this morning star fall from the sky. And so they would relate his fall, the king of Babylon, to the fall of this morning star every morning to Venus. This happens to be the brightest star falling down. And so kind of as a jab, as a as in a joking, kind of in a condescending fashion, this bright star, the king of Babylon, his fall, they would compare to them again as a way of mocking. Now, this does have a dual meaning, or you could possibly say it has a dual meaning, that this refers not only to the king of Babylon, but also to Satan. We'll look at this in just a second, but we need to also deal with how do we go from the Hebrew text, Helel ben Shakar, to being referenced of, of Venus, to then also becoming Lucifer. How this comes about is in the the, uh, the Latin text, the Vulgate, which is a translation of the Hebrew text, as well as the Greek text, but in this case, the Hebrew text, the term that we get, whether it be from the Greek text uh, for the term bright morning star or from the Hebrew text, the Latin translation is where we get the term Lucifer, simply meaning the, the light bearer or the bright star or the star of the morning. This is where this comes from, this light bearer. That's what the Greek word that we have there as well. And so that would be the translation, the Septuagint, is likely where Jerome has gotten his translation from, from this light bearer. As a matter of fact, let's go and look at the Greek text, the Greek translation, the Septuagint, of this Hebrew text. In Isaiah 14, 12, we see the Greek word for eosphoros ha proe, which is the 
bright light bearer or the morning star of the morning or the star of the morning. That's where this term comes from. And so the Septuagint would, would be translated out of Latin into this term Lucifer. Now, there are some stories that say that uh, he was actually also making a dig at someone else uh, whose name was Lucifer, Lucifero. Not sure about that. As a matter of fact, I don't think that has a whole lot of bearing, a lot of credence. But that, that is a story that's out there. But I don't think that's what it is because the Latin term also means this. Now, should we call him Lucifer? If you want to, it's not necessarily a bad thing. But to be proper, that's not what the, the original text says. There's no one who at that term would have heard the name Lucifer. There are two other issues that may come up that also need to be addressed. One, is this referring to not only the king of Babylon, but does it also have a dual ref reference to Satan? Well, probably so. Why? Because Jesus makes a statement also. If we go to Luke chapter 10, verse 18, Jesus says this, And I see, and he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Well, could you also take that to mean uh, in referencing what was said in Isaiah? It's possible because the same thing that happened to this king of Babylon is really the same thing that's happened to uh, Satan. When we go back to the text and we read it, we'll see this, this imagery, these words being spoken of the king of Babylon, they also apply to Satan himself. Look at what it says. O star of the morning, son of the dawn, how you have been cut down to the earth. You have weakened the nation, but you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Nevertheless, you will be thrust down to Sheol, to the recesses of the pit. So there's some similarities between obviously the king of Babylon and also Satan. And so it would not be necessarily improper for someone to say that this is also in reference to Satan. Did he say those words verbatim? We don't know. It's possible, but the Bible didn't record that. But if a person wants to ascribe this as a dual meaning to the king of Babylon as well as Satan, I don't think there's a problem with that. Because again, there's a lot of similarities there. Another question that comes up is if this this king of Babylon, who also may be in reference to Satan, is called the morning star. And Jesus is also called the morning star. How could that possibly be? Well, the simple answer is they're not. They're not called the same thing. Let's go back to the Isaiah text, not the Hebrew text, but let's look at the Greek text to see how this morning star in the Greek is translated. And then let's compare the Greek in Revelation 22, where Jesus is called the morning star. So if we could put it back on the screen, we see O star of the morning, and the term here is hail for us, ha proe. Remember that term, hail for us, ha proe. And now let's go to Revelation chapter 22, and let's see what it says about Jesus. In Revelation 22, 16, he says, I have sent my angel to testify to you these things, for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. So the question is, is this bright morning star the same? Well, no, because the Greek is rendered differently. Look at the Greek term here. We have ha aster, ha lampros, which is not the same as what we saw in the Greek reference to Isaiah 14. Again, ha aster, ha lampros. And if we go back to Isaiah, we see the morning star being referenced as Eophorus ha proe, not the same term at all. And so Jesus is not equating himself with the morning star that we see in Isaiah 14. Two totally different words, different phrases. And so if someone were to equate one or the other, and there are people that will say that Jesus and Satan are the same or they're equated, this might, this might be where they get this from. But just a simple, quick perusing of the Greek, even if you don't know the Greek, you can simply look and see that these words are different words. And so, no, Jesus is not equated to the, the morning star that we see in Isaiah. And even more to the point of this video, Satan, the devil, is not actually called Lucifer. If you want to call him Lucifer, that's fine. Uh, but just understand that biblically, the scriptures never call him Lucifer. No one else ever calls him Lucifer in the Bible. That's, that's a name that's unheard of until the Latin Vulgate, which comes about almost 400 years later, is translated from, from the Greek and Hebrew into Latin. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope this is beneficial to kind of understand what the scriptures actually say, to know that this is not his name, too, to know that there might be possibly a dual meaning for the king of Babylon, as well as 
uh, the devil, and then also that Jesus and this morning star that's in Isaiah are not the same. 